wasting my energy, my, my spit, <laughs> my breath, and it wasted my money. Okay, let's keep it 100. I did not like the fact that they wasted so much of my money. Ka-ching, 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 okay? All my money, all my energy, all my time spent on this interview that I didn't hear from. Hey, 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 guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And this week's episode, we are going to be talking about what it took for me to tap into my big bomb energy, okay? And when I say bomb, I'm talking B O. M. That is betting on me energy. I'm going to be sharing with you guys a story of the worst job interview I've ever gone on, like in my entire life, but how it was the necessary last straw for me to get on my journey loving way <laughs> so I could pursue my joy and purpose with one feel good thing at a time. I hope that you keep listening through to the very, very end because at the end of this episode, as per usual, I will be sharing some solutions and joy gems to help you tap into a faith-fueled, purpose-propelled mindset, as well as solutions so that you can hop on the big bomb energy train too. All right, <laughs> here we go. So I felt a need to have my gifts and my talents as a multi-passionate creative co-signed. And with this, I was constantly looking for a job. Hopping from, I don't wanna say one job to a next, really, it was trying to find a place that found me valuable enough <laughs> to pull me on and um, have me be a part of their team full time. I went on this interview with this company and it was a mom-centered company. So I thought that they would have gotten it. like. I interviewed for this video producer position. I thought that it was gonna be everything that I wanted in a position. It was in New York City. The pay was supposed to be really good. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. So first there was this phone interview. The phone interview was like 20 to 30 minutes. The people were really excited that had me on the interview and they were like, all right, we are gonna put you on um, and have you come into the, in the office for an official interview. And I'm like, I bet it's happening. I wait a couple of days. Finally, I hear from this company. They call me and they were basically like, we love you, can you come in the next day? Meanwhile, I'm a stay-at-home mom. So I'm like, oh, okay, a job is happening. Time to get away from the kids. Time to make a little money. Time to also live in my dreams and passion and also speak with moms about the, the beauty and the challenges of motherhood. This job is perfect. It's gonna be amazing. Though I had some reservations, they weren't really what I was like focusing my attention on. And so when they asked me if I could come in for an interview the next day, I was on it. I did everything that I needed to do. I figured out how I was going to get childcare within less than 12 hours. I figured out how I was going to get into New York City. Mind you, I live in New Jersey. I had to prep for my interview. And basically, I figured out all of these elements and obstacles that needed to be figured out within a very short period of time so that I could confirm the interview because I thought it's about to go down. Listen, y'all, after five years of basically full time mommyhood, I was ready for a break that break being work. This is what happened. I get to my interview the next day and I like, I'm looking all like gussied up. I got my best interview outfit on, my hair is done. Well, who am I kidding? My, my hair, I was starting my lock process. So it, it looked how it looked, but it looked good still. But basically I was ready to go in and kill this interview in a very positive way. I get there and when I get to the reception desk and I'm like, I'm here to meet so-and-so, they're like, oh, that person's not here. They actually just stepped out. Meanwhile, I'm looking around like, what do you mean? I mean, I didn't say this, but I'm like, oh, just stepped out like, like she's gone for the day. But what do you mean? We had an interview skit. I'm on her calendar. So I have to ask her, um, okay, well, I spoke with so-and-so and they told me to come in today um, because I'm supposed to be having an interview. And so the receptionist then contacts the person who set up the interview. That girl comes to the front desk and she's like, oh my goodness, she's not here today. I totally forgot to put it on her calendar. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean you forgot to put it on her calendar? How could you have not put it on her calendar? We had a whole conversation and then she asked me this, y'all. And I kid you not, if you are a 
if you are a parent that has secured child care, okay, you probably feel me on the feels that I'm about to share with you guys. She then proceeded to ask me, I'm going to come close because this is how I felt because I know y'all are, are going to feel me when I say this. She then proceeded to ask me if I could come in the next day. Inside, I was like the Hulk. I was like, <laughs> when she said that, I was like, no, I can't come in tomorrow. <laughs> That's how I felt on the inside. But on the outside, I was like, no, I, <laughs> I, I can't come in tomorrow. Meanwhile, I'm thinking in my mind, do you know what it took for me to get here? Do you know how much I had to pay the babysitter? Do you know how much the trains from New Jersey to New York cost now? All of these things, but on the outside, I kept it cool. And I was like, no, there's absolutely no way I can come back tomorrow. And she was like, oh, okay. Um, well, um, I don't know, give me, give me a second. I'm gonna see what we can work out today. So she then proceeds to call around the office, I'm assuming, I'm not sure, and get someone else to interview me. So it was basically like a pre-interview for in the event that they wanted me to come in for the actual person that was supposed to interview me y'all they kept me there for two hours not only did they keep me there for two hours they had me interview with three different people like a senior video producer senior vice something something like basically passing me around I guess to like make me feel as though the time that I'd spent coming out was worth it I'm not exactly sure what the point of that was and it was a really good interview like I thought I'd killed it the conversation was good we were vibing we were rocking we were sharing and exchanging children's stories because like I said this was a company that caters specifically to mothers like, they know the struggle. They know it's real. <laughs> they also know that if you are a mom that is also doing things, you don't have time to just be wasting. Y'all, I went on all of those interviews and I spent all of that time there only to never hear back from them again. Never heard back from them. Never got a follow-up call, never got a follow-up email saying it was nice having you here. If you didn't get the position, if I didn't get the position, at least tell me why. I didn't even get that. And this is the part that really pissed me off. Let me just call it what it was. It pissed me off. Because not only did I take my time to go out, like I realized in that very moment that the interview pr process and searching for a job and trying to get someone to validate my gifts and my talents was not only wasting my time, because we all know that looking for jobs is time consuming, but it was wasting my energy, my, my spit, <laughs> my breath, and it wasted my money. Okay, let's keep it 100. I did not like the fact that they wasted so much of my money because the sitter for the day cost me 100 day, a dollars. Kaching. The train ride into the city cost me $20. Kaching. The time that I wasted where I could have been investing in something else that would actually would have made me money because I was still making jewelry um, and still do sometimes. But like all of that also wasted my time and my money. Kaching, kaching, kaching. Okay. All my money, all my energy, all my time spent on this interview that I didn't hear from. But here's the thing that interview was just one of many. And it was really through this particular thing that I realized that I was spending all of my time, energy, and money and investing it into other people, basically trying to trying to hope that they would validate my ability to serve the world in a greater and more purposeful and intentional way. But I also came to understand that even if I were to land any of those jobs that I was going on, it wouldn't fulfill all of me. Like at some point I would more than likely get bored because it was whatever job I was applying to wasn't speaking to all of my multi-passionate gifts. Each job that I would apply to was only really speaking to one area of my passion, whether it was specifically video production, whether it was specifically content creation, like via social media posts, whether it was specifically um, designing things. And also, I had to get real clear with the fact that any job that I would take would ultimately also be taking me away from my family. So I wouldn't be able to be present with my growing family. And at this time, my children were like, three and one. And that was something that I knew that was really important to me. 
So on the way back from this job interview, on the long ride back to Jersey, it was like I received a Holy Spirit download as I was eating some tacos because after all that energy that was spent <laughs> and all the anger that I felt in that moment, I needed something crunchy to keep me calm, okay? <laughs> so as I was eating my taco and thinking on this experience, it dawned on me, maybe I wasn't meant to look for a job. Maybe God, the reason why I didn't get any of these jobs that I'd been applying to, and mind you, you guys, I'd been applying to jobs for over a year, like day in, day out. It got to a point where I was getting kind of depressed, if I'm being fully transparent and honest. Yes, this coming from a joy strategist. I was getting kind of depressed because I felt as though no one was seeing my value. No one was seeing me. No one was seeing that I could do the things that they needed, that I was the person that they wanted on their team. And so the more I thought about this in the, on the ride back home, the Holy Spirit download came to me and it was like, well, maybe you weren't meant to get a job because God has something bigger in mind for you. Maybe you aren't meant to get any of those jobs because that's not what God has destined for you. Your gifts are greater than these people would ever be able to utilize. And more importantly, your gift is meant to serve people in a more intentional way way that also won't leave you drained so i didn't get all of that at once but basically the message was you weren't meant to get a job you're meant to do something different you're meant to do something greater and as i got real honest with myself in that moment about what that could mean or what that looked like it dawned on me that as much as i talked about faith and being faith fueled and purpose propelled because at this point I was also running my blog Live Rich Mommy and that was one of the things I spoke about a lot being faith fueled and purpose propelled as much as I was talking it I wasn't walking it because if I truly had faith if I truly believed in myself and believed in the gifts and the talents and the purpose that God had placed on my life I would be willing to walk it like I talk it I'd be willing to take a chance on myself I would be willing to invest by faith in my own dreams as much as I was willing to invest myself into uplifting and elevating the dreams of others. And so in that very moment, as I went home, I really had to sit with those feelings. I had to sit with that conversation and I prayed. I kid you not, I prayed. And as I was praying, um, I prayed for basically strength to commit to full-time entrepreneurship. I also prayed for the Holy Spirit to guide me and what it was that he wanted me to do and how he actually wanted me to go on this journey. But I also prayed for guidance <laughs> and like correct mentors. And let me tell you guys, in the time since, and that was about 2019, mid 2019, I would say it was October 2019. As I did that, the Lord began to show up in really amazing and awesome ways. And it hasn't been easy, but it has been awesome and it's been so fulfilling. One of the biggest things that I've learned through this process and going on this journey to entrepreneurship is the need to invest in myself. Okay, which brings me to the tools that I gained, like three of the biggest tools that I've gained so far in entrepreneurship and understanding. And this is what I promised that I would share with you guys. If you're looking to start a business, if you're looking to follow your joy, if you are looking to um, live a more intentionally and aligned and purpose filled life, these are three things that you definitely want to keep your ear on and actually utilize in your life. So um, the first big tool that I gained was basically investing in myself by getting a mentor. Because listen, there is so much that we don't know we don't know. But on top of that, there's so much that we can learn. And I did a whole podcast episode about investing in yourself specifically and how to invest in yourself. And it doesn't always have to look like spending crazy amounts of money, but you also have to understand that your time is worth something. So if you can get someone who's been there, done that, made the mistakes, and is willing to share them with you so that you don't make those same mistakes you will get a lot further faster and as I was sitting with really thinking about how I'd been doing business for the past two years or the past two decades as a creative entrepreneur because again 
I started this when I was 13 and yes I'd been able to make some money here and there doing all of those things that I shared with you guys again on-air host blogger um, video production I was making some money but I wasn't making it consistently and I also wasn't doing it in a way that was sustainable so I looked for a mentor and I found this amazing amazing like y'all she's the bee's knees I love her so much mentor in Nicole Walters and so I signed up for her course and that was a whole Holy Spirit thing as well. Um, I will share that in a future podcast episode and hopefully you'll be hearing from the lady, Miss Nicole Walters herself, um, if you subscribe to my podcast. So basically, first, first tool, invest in a mentor, however you can get a mentor. If you can, sign up for 1K one day because it's absolutely amazing. That's all I'm going to say about that. The second way that I started to really invest in myself was to start reading books. Listen, y'all, books, well, they're not free, but they can be if you go to your local library. (laughs) Books are a wonderful resource for knowledge and information. And what's more exciting about it is the fact that you can get exactly what it is that you need. There's a book for everything. Books still work. Google is awesome. Yes, Google will get you the things, but also Google's will get you um, the information that was once possessed by experts but they want to share the information with you. So read some books. The third tool that I started to do in investing with myself was to basically invest in my consistency. And that meant taking myself seriously. So with that same energy that I was taking towards um, speaking with uh, people or interviewing or looking for jobs, I began to invest that time and energy into myself and building my business with the information that I'd gained from the courses and different mentorships that I'd had. I took the information, I digested it, and I actively began to implement it on a consistent basis. Because let me tell you, consistency gives clarity. As much as people want to tell you that you can start a business and you'll have all the answers instantaneously, that is not completely true. Like you will gain some answers, but most of that comes in data that you then have to refine and then implement and incorporate, um, put back into the system and then test again. Like it doesn't happen overnight. Okay. Like I said, and this is probably the biggest like moment that I had clarity Clarity is everything. And this is where I come in as a joy strategist. It was only through gaining clarity in what my joy was and how my joy actually put me on path for my purpose that I've been able to create a business that actually gives value and also has validated me in my own gifts and talents. Um, not to like sound any type of way, but that same validation that I was seeking from jobs and looking for um, from jobs to give me a cosign saying, yes, you're creative. Yes, you are, you are intentional. Yes, your life is purposeful. I've been able to, by the grace of God and by him so graciously co-founding, allowing me to co-found this business with him. <laughs> (laughs) because I basically do it by myself, but he's my like other CEO. I'm co-CEO with the Lord, (laughs) but it's by his grace and going through this action of starting the business that I've been able to get that validation, but not through jobs, but through my clients and their testimonials. You guys, Your testimonials when you start a business ultimately then become the validation that you're seeking from a job if that's what you're looking for. And that's something that I found that I was looking for. My clients and their feedback that they would give, talking about how much my program, my Journey to Purpose program, whether it was the Joy Quest, whether it was the monthly challenges, whether it was my six week workshop, Journey to Purpose vision casting, the feedback that they gave me and how it was actually able to impact and motivate them, but also give them like tangible stuff that allowed them to strengthen their relationships and live more energized is everything. (laughs) So yeah, that's why I started my business. I started my business to help people, but really also in understanding that it's really about the joy in the journey, finding clarity about what brings you joy, because the moment you're able to live a life that is joy led, you will find your purpose. And the moment you're able to find your purpose, you're able to show up for the world in a more impactful, a more intentional, and a more 
sustainable way that also makes you feel good and pours those f same feel goods into the lives of others around you so then it becomes just a wonderful ripple effect of radical joy quick question do you wish that you had the confidence and the discipline to use your creative gifts to create a life that is more fulfilling and purpose propelled or maybe you are just plain old over it and by it I mean everything. <laughs> if you answered yes to one or maybe all of these things, I'm here to help you dream again. I would like to invite you to join me for class for women and entrepreneurs who want a roadmap to feeling less overwhelmed, less overworked, and more connected to their dreams and goals. You'll walk away from this journey to dream the clarity around how to craft a vision that produces an unapologetically beautiful life that is grounded in joy, improving your relationships, your career, your wellness, and even your finances. Even if you're unsure of what your purpose is, whether you're a college graduate that's looking to find work, a stay-at-home mom who's looking to rediscover yourself and your identity outside of your children, or maybe you're even at a point in your career where you're switching career paths or you're ready to enter retirement and you're just unsure of what it is that you wanna do next. The best years are ahead of you and if you've lost sight of how to get there, I am here to help you rediscover your freedom and joy. If this sounds like something that you may be interested in, please visit the link shared below or somewhere around this screen, up here, down there, in a comment box somewhere. I will teach you how to journey to your dreams again by creating a system of how you can change your life through joy. I hope to see you there, but until then, I hope that you remember that we're on this journey together, one feel good thing at a time. I'll catch you in class. As you can see, I was not lying. That entire interview process was a hot behind mess. But thankfully, I was able to gain so much from that experience that really helped me understand the need for that season and also um, for the peace and moving forward with pursuing my purpose and my joy. If you were listening, then there were some solutions that were shared, but I want to give you guys three more, especially as it comes to the entire interviewing process. Are you guys ready? <laughs> so the first solution that I want to share with you guys is to have an interview plan. And with this, the idea is to be prepped and ready for when things are ready to pop off. Okay, when all those jobs are starting to call you, as my mentor would say, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Okay, and this could look a number of ways, but... The first thing I would suggest to you guys is to have an interview plan. And with that, know what you're gonna be wearing, have your interview outfit ready because nothing stinks more than not knowing what you're gonna wear for the interview or showing up in a place where you're not prepared based on what the corporate culture is, you just wanna make sure that you are prepped to go, okay? If you are a parent, make sure you have your plan as far as childcare in place. Make sure you have that babysitter's number on speed dial. If it's not a babysitter, if it's a family member that will be able to watch your child, um, then make sure you get that ready as well. The second solution that I wanna share with you guys is to remember that you are an asset. I'm gonna say that one more time, okay? So it sinks in, like for real, for real. Remember that you are an asset. Even though you are looking for a job and the place that you're interviewing for will potentially hire you, understand that they're not doing you any favors and you're not necessarily doing them any favors. This is a mutually beneficial relationship that you are looking to engage in, okay? You will be gaining experience from the job. You'll be gaining a paycheck from the job. You'll be gaining coworkers and collaboration and hopefully more skills that you can use and transfer into other areas of your life as well. But understand this, the job is not doing you any favors because they're also gaining from you being there <laughs> because you are an asset. The skills that you have, asset. The energy that you bring, asset. The fact that you are you, asset. Your experience and your background, asset. Everything about you is also going to benefit the place that you're working. So as you're going on these job interviews, take your time through these interview processes. If there's anything that I gained from the experience of going on this interview that I shared with you guys today, it was that I shouldn't have rushed the process. I was so pressed. <laughs> 
for a job. I was so desperate for someone to hire me that I literally dropped everything that I had planned for the rest of the week to accommodate their request for me to come in for an interview. Like she'd given me less than 24 hours notice and I did everything in my power to make it happen. And happen, it did, but not the way it should have. And all of the things that transpired after me saying yes to that interview came at my expense <laughs> and absolutely no expense to the company. So um, understand that in the same way that they are asking you to come in for a job interview, you can put a pause on that and say yes, or you can also tell them that you need a little more time. You'd like to consider different things. You'll get back to them. So make sure that you're doing what you can to accommodate the request, but not doing it at the expense of being stressed, okay? Don't stress yourself out. Do it in a way where you feel comfortable and where you are able to really enjoy the process. <laughs> the third and final solution that I wanna share with you guys is to do your research. And if you can, send a confirmation email. Now, in this particular experience that I shared with you, I didn't feel the need to send a confirmation email because they had called me the day before and it was there was a really big to-do made about me coming in for the interview. So on my end, I thought that everything was squared away. Apparently it wasn't. So if you are able to, make sure you do a confirmation email before you come out for the interview itself. But also take the time to do some research and this is something that I feel like if you're going through the interview process, you should do anyway. But again, common sense isn't always common. If you are going on an interview, make sure you do research on the person that will be interviewing you. And let me tell you where the best spot to find all the good information is, okay? LinkedIn. You could do a Facebook search. You could try an Instagram search. <laughs> That's kind of like the wild, wild west. But LinkedIn will help you understand the professional background of the person that you'll be interviewing with, where they came from, what, how they worked their way up in the company, along with some other gems. Like maybe there will be some articles there. So not only will you have this person as a newly shared contact once you're going into the interview process. Once the interview is over, if you don't hear back from them, then you can follow up with them via message on LinkedIn asking if they have any suggestions or feedback as to why you didn't get the job. The point here is to make sure that you are covering all bases. And I always say that nothing is ever a waste, but at the same time, you also want to make sure that you're gaining the most that you can from this experience. So if you didn't get the job, it would be super helpful for you to understand why you didn't get the job so that you can keep that in mind for future interview opportunities. Okay. <laughs> now that we've run through our solutions, it's time to tap into some joy gems. Today's joy gem comes from Jeremiah 29 11, and it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, I love this scripture so much because a lot of times people call this scripture when they are going through a hard time. And it's like, Lord, I know that if you brought me to it, you will bring me through it. And the answer is yes. But what I think a lot of people fail to understand without the full context of the chapter from which this particular scripture comes from is that the very thing that the Lord was talking about delivering them from or keeping them from is actually something that the Lord intentionally delivered the Israelites into. And the reason why was because they were being disobedient. Yes, God is faithful in that he will keep us and he will protect us and he has those plans to prosper us and to give us hope in a future. But sometimes he brings us to those places of difficulty and those times of difficulty so that we can then surrender to him and put ourselves in a position of needing him and only him. So when I think of my experience in looking for a job and when I was really going through it, I needed to go through all of these things. I needed to go on this extremely horrible job interview process before I received that Holy Spirit download. And I promise you guys, it was like a whisper and like, it's so random as I was eating my taco and the whisper came a little something like this. You're not meant to work for others. You're not meant to work for others. And I, I promise you, as I as I had that thought, it was like a fleeting thought, but it, it hit me so hard. 
And through that time, through that experience, through those words, through that Holy Spirit download, I then began to understand, oh, what I need to do is surrender my will. What I need to do is surrender my plans. What I need to do is surrender my understanding to the Lord himself so that he can begin to do a work in me, so that he can begin to do a work through me. And it was only through that process that I really committed to the journey to purpose and understanding that while I had all of these great aspirations and desires, the desires that I really need to pursue were the ones that God had placed on my heart. And some of them I didn't even fully understand. But as I went on this process of living a truly faith-fueled and purpose-propelled life, it was only after that that things started to really fall into place for me. And that required a couple of other things like some prayer. It required fasting, which was something that I'd never really done um, with as much intention as I did in that period of my life. It required me sitting down and taking time to read the word, not because I was only trying to gain a message for a hard time that I was going through, but really to cultivate a habit of building a relationship with the Lord himself. So that whenever he spoke to me and in the ways that he would speak to me, I would actually be, then be able to understand and interpret what it was that he was trying to tell me. Are you feeling what I'm saying? The point here is to understand that Sometimes we go through hard times so that we could recognize our need to really build <laughs> and keep a relationship with the Lord himself. Um, and I also want to share verse seven because I find it really interesting that it says, um, and this is the second joy gem, in verse Jeremiah 29, verse seven, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And the reason why I think this is so important to highlight is because the Lord, I don't want to say he sold his people into exile, but he, he sent them into exile, okay? And they were planning on going back to Egypt, and the Lord kept telling them over and over again, obey me, do not serve other gods. I'm tired of y'all serving other gods. Don't y'all remember everything that I've done for y'all. Don't give in to submitting yourself to other gods and doing detestable things that do not glorify me. But the people of Israel wouldn't listen. And so at one point, the Lord had it up to here and was like, okay, cool. I am going to send you guys into exile. But while you're there, don't hate the time that you're there because I am sending the Babylonians to carry you off into exile. So while you're there, Enjoy the time that you are in captivity for seven years, 70 years. He told them exactly how long they were going to be there. He told them what they needed to do while they were there. He said to them, build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. And then he said the seek peace and prosperity bit. In the same way that the Lord told this to the children of Israel as they were being carried off into exile, intentional exile by the Lord himself when he could have saved them, but he was actually the one that sent them. In that same way, making sure that we are taking time to in some way give thanks for the experience because there's always something to be gained there. There's always good to be had from the situation. This almost makes me think of the um, verse from 1 Thessalonians 5.16 where it says, be joyful always. And this is part of the reason why I really believe that joy is our ministry as human beings. In this very scripture, the Lord tells them, if pray to the Lord for it, it being the city of Babylon, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. The Lord did send them into exile. He sent his children into exile, but the reason why he sent them into exile was because he wanted them to prostrate their heart and their spirits towards him. He wanted them to go in to Babylon, but come out better for it because he wanted to build a relationship with them while he was there. And before he did this, he gave them the promise that he would care for them while there. So he told them to get comfortable while they were in exile and that they shouldn't really allow themselves to um, get to a point of destitution or like not feeling any type of hope. And I really, really love this message because it could be applied to every area of life. Like even when, when we're in jobs that we can't stand, when we're in relationships that we can't stand, like, you know, care for yourselves 
as necessary, but also understand that sometimes you need to go through those growing pains. Sometimes you need to go through that frustration. Sometimes you need to go through whatever it is so that you can come out better. And that's exactly what his plan was when he sent his children, the Israelites, into exile in Babylon. Oh my gosh. There's so much other good stuff that I love about this scripture. But at this point, um, I'm going to end it here because y'all know I can go on and on and on. Before we go, I would love to hear from you. What is the worst job interview you ever had and why? <laughs> Bring on the stories. I can't wait to hear them. I hope that you gained a lot of value from the conversation. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are watching on YouTube. If you are listening on an audio streaming service, then I would love it if you could subscribe there as well. And feel free to share the goodness with a friend who could use the word. Okay. In addition to this, I also want to remind you that the Journey to Purpose Dream Academy is officially open for enrollment. We are accepting new students for our six-week academy. And in this time, you will learn so much about finding joy, creating intentional joy-led habits, how doing so can put you on path for your purpose, and so much more. If you need more details, make sure you check out the link that is shared in the description box, as well as the show notes. But until then, I look forward to chatting with you guys next week as we join you together one feel-good thing at a time. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you then. Bye. I really like this. I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> they didn't see. It. <laughs> that's not that's not how they Nick. Come babe. Sorry. For real? Yeah. Oh man. Wait, who's watching the kids? No one's watching the kids, so now I definitely have to go. And I look forward to connecting with you and speaking with you and engaging with you. Look at how fast he is. Look at that bay. Oh my gosh. He used to be on a track team. I married a track star. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting distracted. What was I saying? I look forward to engaging with you guys um, and speaking with you and helping you rediscover, reconnect, and recommit to your purpose and identity and joy. One feel-good thing at a time. Until the next time, bye!